What's good, everyone, and welcome back to the Find to Four channel. We are on our free money list series number one, talking about trading using fundamental analysis. So in this section, we will discuss how to determine the value of a security using economic key economic factors and how to pick the best company to put your money into. So grab your notebooks, buckle up, hands and feet inside the right at all times. Let's go with this money. So by looking at relevant economic and financial factors, fundamental analysis is a technique for determining a security's intrinsic value. Now, remember, we talked about intrinsic value in our intro to options videos, uh, but the value of a security can be influenced by a variety of factors, including macroeconomic factors like the state of the economy and uh, market conditions. It also can be influenced by microeconomic factors like the efficiency of the company's management. Basically, fundamental analysis looks into all of these factors, right? Now, the technical analysis approach, <clears throat> which forecasts, you know, price direction by examining historical market data like price and volume, um, is thought to be the opposite of this approach to stock analysis or fundamental analysis. So uh, when compared to technical analysis, Fundamental analysis spans a much wider time period. This is due to the fact that a company's intrinsic value or its true value is what fundamental analysis seeks to determine. And it frequently takes you know, years for market securities to trade at a price that reflects its value. Therefore, in long-term stock investment, fundamental analysis is frequently used. Um, because option contracts have a time limit, we primarily use technical analysis uh, for those. Um, though to be a to become a well-rounded trader, you must have a solid grasp of fundamental analysis too. Okay. Um, now the two categories of fundamental analysis are quantitative and qualitative. Okay. Now a quantitative element is when a company discloses information about his uh, financial performance through financial statements. You know, analysts base their investment decisions on the uh, quantitative data they have gleaned from financial statements, okay? Um, quantitative elements are also capable of being, you know, measured or formulated through numerical expression. Um, so there's the balance sheets, there's the income statements and cash flow statements that are the three most, uh, most important financial statements. Again, the balance sheet for the company, income statement, and then the company's cash flow statement, or sometimes it'll say statement of cash flow. Um, so we'll break these down. So first, the balance sheet. The balance sheet serves as a record of a company's assets, liabilities, and equity at a uh, specific point in time. Uh, the balance sheet gets its name from how a company's uh, financial structure balances out. Now, the formula uh, for the balance sheet is basically the equity held by shareholders plus liabilities equals the assets. All right. Equity held by shareholders plus liabilities equals the assets. Right. Um, now, the resources that the company currently controls or owns are represented by the assets. Um, the total amount of financing that the business used to you know, buy their assets is shown on the other side of that equation. Um, liabilities or equity are the sources of financing. Uh, liabilities are debt obligations that must be repaid, whereas equity is the total amount of money that the owners have invested in the company, including like retained earnings or you know, profit from prior years, okay? Now, of the financial statements, a balance sheet is the least preferred. In a nutshell, it informs you of the company's or the business's net worth at a specific time. So it accomplishes this by, again, disclosing all of its cash assets and liabilities. Um, balance sheets are crucial, you know, when searching for growth stocks because they reveal a company's uh, financial stability. Now, since it doesn't inform you of the outlook for the future, again, it's the least favorite for most analysts. And by the way, when examining a balance sheet, you know, make sure that more than 30% of a company's assets exceed its liabilities, right? And also make sure that the uh, annual total cash is increasing, okay? And then there's the income statement for the company. So 
The income statement tracks a company's progress over a given period of time, whereas the balance sheet examines, examines a business um, at a specific time, right? So even though you could technically, you know, have a balance sheet for a month or even a day, um, public companies only report on a quarterly or any annual basis, okay? Um, the income statement basically details the revenues, cost, and profit produced by the company's operations during that time period. All right. So the three main ways that the um, income statements are prepared are monthly, quarterly, and annually. And I would advise just concentrating on the quarterly income statement if I were y'all. Okay. So typically what I do is I go to Yahoo Finance and I go to profits after opening the uh, company's income statement. Um, and there are, you know, a bunch of metrics that you'll see, but you want to see positive net cash flow, right? And we can determine this by examining gross uh, gross profit and total revenue. And you want to see a positive growth profit number for a fundamental, uh, basically a, a good sound business. And this simply indicates that the enterprise is profitable despite its costs, okay? Um, additionally, you want to learn about their margins, right? Their profit margins. Um, it, you do this by comparing their overall revenue to gross profits. Um, companies have a lot of expenses, so you know there should really be a big difference in that. But you don't want to see a company with one billion dollars in revenue and only fifty million in gross gross profits, because that will suggest that the company has poor, very thin margins, right? Um, and then look at their quarterly profits for the past few years. You know, is there a rising or falling trend? Do they typically have poor earnings for a specific uh, quarter? You know, also is growth profit rising? while revenues are increasing. So you should want to see a large gross, gross profit and significant positive net cash flow. Um, and you also want to see that the gross profit and revenue are rising quarterly and or annually. And then finally, the cash flow statement for the company. So the cash inflows and outflows of a company are tracked on what they call the statement of cash flows. Um, and there are some cash related activities that typically are the main focus of the statement of the cash flows. Um, so there's the cash from investing, the CFI, which refers to both the cash used to purchase assets and the uh, proceeds from the sale of long-term assets and machinery, you know, and other businesses. Um, cash received or paid as a result of borrowing money and issuing debt is known as cash from financing, CFF. Um, cash produced by regularly um, or regular business operations is known as operating cash flow, OCF, okay? So because a company finds it very challenging to control this cash situation, the cash flow statement is probably the most important out of all three. Um, some accountants, they can easily manipulate earnings, but it's difficult to create fake money in the bank, right? So because of this, some investors consider the cash flow statement to be, uh, you know, a more sensible indicator of a company's performance. Okay, so that's quantitative. Then there's qualitative. So, in contrast to a business's uh, size or quantity, a company's quality or its character is often referred to or based on what they call qualitative. Um, the business model, you know, which is not as simple to understand as it may seem, um, describes the company's uh, what they actually do. It describes what they actually do. Um, is the company making money if its business model is based on selling fried chicken or is it just getting by on royalties and franchise fees? So a company's ability to sustain, to sustain and grow its uh, you know, competitive advantage is the key factor in determining its long-term success. A strong competitive advantage is like Coca-Cola's well-known brand uh, brand name and you know Microsoft's dominance of the personal computer uh, operation system build what they call a quote-unquote moat around a company, uh, basically keeping rivals at bay while allowing it to grow and prosper. Um, a company's shareholders may also receive su substantial uh, returns over a long period of time when it can secure a competitive advantage. So um, according to some, management should be the primary consideration when making an investment uh you know in a company um it makes sense that if the company's leaders don't carry out the plan effectively 
even the best business model will fail. Now, re retail, you know, traders and retail investors may find it challenging to meet and, you know, properly assess managers, but you can look at the company uh, website and review the board members and the, the, um, the executive management's resumes. Um, have they been selling off a lot of their stock recently? You know, how well did they perform in their prior positions? You know, looking at the brain or the management of a company is very important. So then there's the corporate governance. So corporate governance refers to rules that an organization has to put in place to indicate the rules and responsibilities of management, you know, directors and uh, stakeholders. The companies charter their bylaws and, you know, uh, other corporate laws and regulations define and establish these policies. So um, you want to find a business that is run ethically, fairly, openly, um, effectively. So take note whether management upholds the interests and you know the rights of shareholders. You know, make sure that the or that their shareholder communications are open, concise, and understandable. You know, if you notice that it's hard to understand. It probably means that they don't want you to understand it. Okay. So um, then a company's industry should also be taken into account, um, including like its clientele, its um, its competitors, market shares, you know, growth overall, competition, laws, and you know, business cycles. You know, um, our comprehension of a company's financial health will be enhanced by learning about the workings of the industry. So, for instance let's say coca-cola um the annual dividend payout their earnings per share the pe ratio you know many other you know like quantitative aspects of the stock uh, obviously must be considered you know by you know uh by analysts when analyzing the company though without considering coca-cola's brand recognition however no analysis of the company would be complete right um anyone can launch a business selling soda but very few are well known to billions of people you know the coke brand is difficult to quantify but you know that the brand plays a crucial role in the company's continued success right that's qualitative analysis right um so if you trade options keep in mind that uh, fundamental analysis relates to the company's intrinsic value which does take a while to manifest um, so when trading options with shorter expiration windows, like over months, use fundamental analysis to support your technical analysis, right? Um, for trading options for earnings reports, um, fundamental analysis is very, very helpful. You know, many traders may bet on whether the company will have a positive report where reported revenue, you know, net income and EPS exceed the uh, consensus numbers projected by analysts from other banks, uh, from major banks, should I say, uh, which will send the stock upward or vice versa by reading the guidance of previous reports and looking at the uh, expansion and growth of the company's divisions, as well as you know other factors that affect the bottom line. Um, and so, when performing fundamental analysis, there are a bunch of things you know that we must comprehend um, and you know pay close attention to. You know, even though many you know, of these key factors you know will vary from sector to sector. This, this video basically covers fundamentals that you should get comfortable with, all right? Then finally, just some hot tips if you stay to the end of the video. Remember to divide all assets into current and non-current categories. So an asset is considered current if it can be reasonably uh, converted into cash within one year. So cash inventories and net receivables you know, are all important, you know, current assets because they offer flexibility and solvency. So we as investors should pay uh, close attention to retain earnings and uh, paid in capital under the equity section because these items are what shareholders actually have a claim to after subtracting the assets from the liabilities. And trust me, there is, you know, much more to learn in depth about the various types of financial statements, but to know all that, I would suggest go go take a financing or a should I say a, an accounting course, okay? Um, also another hot tip. So there's also a really good website for a quick, you know, fundamental stock analysis. Um, it's called finbox.com and you don't need to make an account for this. Um, this website automatically performs um, a lot of, you know, other automatic calculations in addition to a five year and 10 year intrinsic value of a stock. 
which is what you want to know for investing long term, right? Now, it's not always pinpoint accurate, um, but with that said, you know, it works well for stocks and industries like banking and energy and airlines that don't trade based off a of hype like the Bitcoins of the world and the GameStops of the world. So um, just always keep in mind also that uh, some names in the uh, tech sector trade well above book value too, right? And we'll leave a, a link in the description to the website. Uh, but what you want to do is, so you want to head over to finbox.com forward slash NASDAQ GS a colon uh, AAPL um, and that's that's a ticker symbol for Apple and we'll put that in the description as well and then what you want to do is you want to search um, search the ticker um, in this example we'll use Apple AAPL um, and then next you want to click on the models tab in the middle of the screen and then from here you'll just see it basically has a bunch of models you know you can choose from I prefer to use the DCF growth exit. All right. Um, and then so real quick, this is the uh, five year discounted cash flow, basically cal calculating um, intrinsic value all done automatically. Super simple, easy to find, uh, you know, some discounted stock for the long term. Right. And then it's always best to tie this approach in with technical analysis, which we'll go over in the next series. But here you can even look at you know, uh, 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 analyst ratings to see how they value the stock. So it overall, it's just a great tool for long-term investing. Um, and then to find fundamentally um, undervalued companies on dips for long-term investing, uh, investing uh, it will show you positive free cash flow and uh, profit profitable companies that are 30 year or 30% from its highs, right? 30% from its highs. So again, we'll put the link in the description for all that, okay? So this finishes off our fundamental analysis video. In our next video, we will finally end off series number one with risk management, the most important aspect of trading and investing. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, share this video with everyone you know. I love y'all from your truly financial forum.